welcome to Pyware Homeschool. Uh, we're doing a master session today with Jesse Mercer. Uh, he's the art director for Pi Graphics. He's been with us for going on close to 10 years now. Yeah, 2011. <laughs> That's 11. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's been a it's been a minute. Um, and Jesse, could you give us a little bit of your background? Yeah. Um, how's it going, guys? Uh, I'm Jesse, um, 3D artist, art director, um, pretty much. All the 3D stuff, the animations, um, venues, all that stuff you see on scene. That's uh, that, that that was me and Dustin's handiwork put together. Um, yeah, I want to thank you guys all for being here, um, coming out and you know just learning tonight. Uh, it, uh, does my heart well. Um, I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu teacher uh, on top of a 3D artist by trade, and uh, jiu-jitsu is kind of like a touchy thing, martial art, and with the whole virus situation going on right now, uh, it's not really allowed. So my <laughs> teaching bug is definitely been growing. So thank you guys very much for being here. Great. Um, well, what, what new stuff do we have today? Well, um, today um, I'm going to go ahead and share out um, something we've been cooking up in the lab. It's something for you guys when you guys are making fabrics, um, something that will make your lives considerably easier. And I wanted to go ahead and share that out for you guys, uh, Photoshop and GIMP versions. Just kind of want to walk through just how to kind of put it all together and then also um just kind of my mindset when i'm making fabrics and just kind of quick tips and tricks and things that i've learned along the way that can kind of speed your guys's processes up and you know make make your processes a lot easier and yeah Great. that is the plan awesome all right so we're starting out in photoshop today correct yes sir yes sir um, right here, I'm going to share something out right now called the Marcher Generic Uniform Template that is coming out right now. This is just the PSD version. For the people that are using GIMP, I will get to you in just a second. We're just going to start with Photoshop, then we're going to move into GIMP, and then, yeah. After that, question time and all that good stuff. Wonderful. But uh, here we go. i um, going to go ahead and share the Marcher Generic Uniform Template PSD. Okay. Sharing that right now. And this is the one that we're looking at currently, right? Correct, correct. That is this right here. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and start explaining this um, just as you guys are going ahead and downloading. I understand that this looks like a rainbow exploded on somebody, but uh, what this is is actually just kind of a color code showing you all the different parts in this giant labyrinth of layers right here. And I promise you there's a method of my madness. And... Um, I will explain that the second you guys are all ready to go. So go ahead and take off, sir. All righty. So I'm also going to be sharing, I'm assuming that you guys already have it all, but the uniform template with ethnicities. I'm going to go ahead and share that too, just in case you guys don't have quick access to it and you want to just get that open right now. Go ahead and send that out because that's going to be where we put the exported version of this into the marcher template and exporting out your, your fabric for Pyware. Go ahead and send that out right now as well. Sharing. And yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you just kind of how this is all set up and then we're going to kind of go from there. So over here, right up top, just like in uh, a lot of the, uh, models we send you and the textures we send you, we have the guides just so that you always kind of know where you're at. The legs, the arms, back, front, feet, hands, all that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and hide that for right now. And we're going to just kind of jump right on into here. So don't worry about fabric uh, texture bases just yet. We'll get to that in just a minute. But we're going to start with this right here. So this cape, this is a bunch of different types of cape. Cape going all the way down to the bottom of the back of your ankles. Cape that only goes down to the mid shoulder right here and everything in between, okay? So you've created multiple different capes that they can choose Correct. from. Correct. So we're gonna kinda, I'm gonna gloss through all this real quick and then we'll jump back in to kinda see how it all works. So capes of all sizes, sashes, we're gonna hide these capes. Say you don't want a character with capes, go ahead and hide those. You're good to go. Sashes, we have the one going one way, 
We have a sash going the other way. And then we also have one kind of going over both, just in case you want to have that option as well. Again, if you don't want any sashes or anything on your marcher, just go ahead and hide that, and you're good to go. We're going to move down one more to the belt. Go ahead and take that off. We don't want it. We're going to move now down to the gauntlets. We're going to go ahead and notice that the gauntlets are broken up into three different categories. Left hand, right hand, and both hands together. Uh, long story short, I kind of put it together like that just to make it as easy as possible for you guys to just kind of plow on through and not have to go back and find anything or anything like that. So let's go ahead and look at the gauntlet left hand. Right here, if you notice, the red flashing part that's going in and out, that is going to be the pointy tip that goes kind of at the elbows. This part right here, gauntlet straight, would be if the gauntlet was kind of just going straight right here. This part right here will actually be the piece that covers your wristbands. And at the very bottom is the whole gauntlet all together. So say we don't want it be, to be broken up in a bunch of different colors. We just want it one big color. You can just go ahead and do it right there. Okay. The same can be said for the gauntlet in the left hand, or right hand, rather, and also gauntlets on both hands. So it's the same concept going to apply. Just kind of move all the way down. Moving forward, right here are the gloves. Left hand, right hand, both hands. You're going to notice there's a trend here. When we get into the gloves, I'm going to go ahead and hide and show. Notice how Let's see here. So here's the glove left hand right here. These different colored parts are going to show the hand, and by hand, I mean like this point right here, down below, the fingers, where the fingertips would be. This would be for, say, you're doing uh, gloves that actually have no fingers whatsoever, um, just in case you guys do want to use that and have that open. Then also the thumbs. So that applies left hand, right hand, and both hands. Right here we have the coat. We have two different types of coats. Right here, this takes care of the collar. Coat type one is kind of the basic marcher uniform that has this kind of V going on right here. Coat type two will be just kind of straight across. And the arms are, well, the arms, left and right. Down below that, we have the boots. The boots go from boots that are covered from the pants all the way down. And they move all the way to boots going up to a knee high level. Let's see here. So, long story short. What's that? That covers a lot of different uniform styles. Correct. So, with that being said, last case are the pants. With these pants, we have the front, the back, and then also the center stripes on the side of the pants that happen to be on a lot of the marchers. And then, of course, if you don't really want to split it down and you just want to just grab the pants, the whole thing, that's going to be it right there. So, with it explained, let me go ahead and hop on in and show you the method to my madness in doing all of this. Show us how to create one from yes, the sir. Here. So, say we want just a just a basic marcher, no cape, anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. We'll go ahead and give him a sash. Why not? Gonna go ahead and lose the belt. We're gonna have some kind of basic gauntlets going on. Okay. 
and we're going to go with just just kind of regular gloves as well. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm hiding all the things that I don't want to be shown before we go ahead and start doing the color, and then we're going to go ahead and do the color. So okay. right now we're just kind of blocking out our form that we want before we actually get all the coloring done, and then we go from there. So let's see here. We've got the gloves. Let's go with coat type one. See how the little red part right here disappeared behind it? That's how you'll know coat type two is no longer active. Okay. Coat arms, left and right. You know what? We're going to get kind of weird here on this one. And we're going to have the arms be different colors. So we're going to have that one present. And then on this one, just one. And with the boots, we are just going to do them covered by pants. So we can go ahead and remove that knee-high boot version right there. And then let's go ahead and get started. So, like I was saying, our guy's going to have a sash, right? <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to go ahead and do a red sash today. So, the way we're going to change the color for each one of these things is we're going to double click right here where it says color overlay okay so let's double click real quick it's going to open up and we're going to have this color and that color is going to coincide with this one right here so let's go ahead and put a red sash on there boom and done sash is taken care of gauntlets let's see we want our gauntlets to be the exact same color as the sash so what we're going to do is go to this color overlay right here, double click, wait for it to open up. And we're going to double click right in here, okay? Right here in the color window. We're going to double click. It's going to open up, right? All we're going to do is take our mouse and we're going to move it right to this red that we want to be, to be the color. Oop. My English bad there. I apologize. Boom. So you're sampling the color that you created the sash, sash with. Correct, correct. So, I'm just going to go ahead and close this up since we don't really need to be there anymore. we got gloves both hands. Let's have these be a dark gray color. So again, we're just going to hop right into that color overlay. Double click. Take that green color, just put it at a nice dark gray color right here. Boom. We are good to go. I'm liking that gray and red combination, so let's go ahead and kind of keep messing with that. With our collar. Let's go ahead and open that up. Notice how we've got collar rim and collar. Collar rim is this piece right here. Collar is the piece wrapping around. Then collar all is if we want the collar just to be one big collar. Let's go ahead and make us two colors. So collar rim. Double click on color overlay. You're going to notice there's a trend here. Double click on the color. Go ahead and match just right here. Click OK. With the color, same thing. And we are moving along. I'm going to go ahead and close the collar section right now. Open up coat type one. You'll notice in here we have the front and the back. Go ahead and have the back be gray. And let's make the front fun color. Mm. White. Wait. <laughs> let's do white. That's exactly what I was about to say. That was, was going to be the fun color. You read my mind, Dustin. <laughs> white front, black back. Yes, sir. Figured might as well go with the plywood colors, right? There we go. It gives you a a visual effect if they face back field, then. Mm-hmm. So. 
The code is now taken care of. As you can see, it's all filled. Now we're gonna move on to the arms. Like I said, we're gonna do these a little bit different, right? So right here, arm left bottom. Maybe this part right here. It's gonna be whenever the marcher has his arm out, this part, all of the bottom here will be so the underneath of forward. his arm. What's that? The underneath of his arm that's touching Correct. the bottom. Correct. Top arm will come all the way out. Notice that this is covered in the gauntlet, but if the gauntlet is hidden, go ahead and move all the way up real quick. If the gauntlet is hidden, it'll move, it'll go all the way down. Okay. So back to the arm. Hmm. Let's go ahead. Well, let's go ahead and show it before I actually start changing colors on it. Let's go ahead and make this part white. Let me go ahead and make the top part red. And the other arm. Let's go ahead and make that gray. <coughs> so I have decided that I don't like how this is going right here, and I want to change that as quickly as possible, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the gauntlet. Right here, it's gone with both hands, right? If you let go, you can go back to here. Just do gone with left hand. We can put them on top of each other, and you'll notice they coincide nicely. I want this one to be gray all the way through. So what we're going to do, double click. And there we go on the fly quickly and cleanly awesome. all right so we've got the gloves taken care of we've got the arms taken care of our boots let's go ahead and do them do them low notice the soles right there got those broken up so you can kind of change it out however you want let's go ahead and let's do black shoes all the way through right so we're going to double click Double click again. Black. Go to boots covered, which is going to be this right here. Double click. Double click. Black. And we now have black boots. Let's see here. So, I like the boots. I like all this going on. Let's go ahead and carry our color scheme up a little bit with the pants go ahead and get those side stripes nice and red change the color of the back of the pants to that nice gray there And let's make the back of the pants, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, that was back of the pants. Notice uh, as that changes right here, it also changed right up here as well. And that's a, a good indicator of the back of the front. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and take the front of those pants. Let's get that blue out of there. And let's go with some black. Black and white on the front gray in the back yes sir so at this point in time we're pretty much good to go see that's kind of all we wanted to do it's kind of a basic simple texture mm -hmm. or fabric and that's kind of all we wanted to do from here let's go ahead and close everything down what we're going to do now 
go ahead and click right up here at Marcher Uniform Generic. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is right click. And right here where it says duplicate group, go ahead and duplicate it. Call it whatever you'd like. I love everywhere. And then what we're going to do is right click on the group that we just made. Notice how it's not the initial group that we worked on. All we're going to do is right click on that and merge group. Now we have a layer. Okay. So from here, what we're going to do is open up the or the uh, uniform template that we usually use. Go ahead and get that open now. All we're going to do is right here where this guy is. We're going to select all. The way to do that is hit Control A or Apple A. Whichever one works for you. Uh, if you're using a Mac, it's going to be Apple A. If you're using a uh, PC, it's going to be Control A. So Control A, and then either Apple or Control, and then hit C for copy. And let's go into here. Back into our uniform template with ethnicities. We're going to hit Control or Apple A again. Then we're going to hit Control or Apple and then V. Copy and paste. Voila! We are done. We now have a uh, marcher ready to go. And could you uh, walk through saving that? Absolutely. So from here, all we're going to do, file, save as. We're going to save this as. We're going to go ahead and keep the naming convention going. We're going to save it as a PNG file right here. PNG. Direct a little Pixar, which that's, I'm assuming that's where the movie company got the name from. I don't know. Save. And then you are good to go. From there, you can just. We can load that into Pyware. Mm -hmm. Could you share that uh, in a handout as well? The I Love Pyware PNG? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead and add that right now. And we have a couple of questions on GIMP when we get there. Okay, for sure. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done in Photoshop so far? Any questions on Photoshop? If, if not, we'll move on to the GIMP section. Well, actually, uh, before we move into the GIMP section, okay. let me, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let me go ahead and kind of go off on one more thing that I like to do. Um, sure. This is kind of one of the things that will really help with your with your fabric creation, um, speeding it along if you're having a really detailed fabric. So what we just did was the basic flat colors, right? Well, I mean, that perfect world, you know, all marching, all, all fabrics would be flat colors like that, but that's not really how it is. Um, you'll see, you know, uniforms with sequins, with plaid, all that good stuff. And it's just something that you really just painting it on this texture is just going to be an absolute nightmare. So, um, I wanted to go over something real quick to make your lives just a little bit easier if you wanted to add a little bit more realistic textures or anything like that. And, uh, right up top in the generic marcher uniform tablet, we're going to go ahead and delete the I Love Pieware layer. We're going to go back down to the Marcher Uniform Generic. Yes, I still love Pyware, but I'm not going to. Anyways, so we're going to open up Fabric Texture Bases. In here, I gave you guys two little seamless textures that we can use to actually put on this model right here. Um, let's start with the sequence. So this my friends, is one of my best weapons when it comes to making fabrics. Uh, this is my, yeah, my master, yeah, I, I was going to say something funny, but I, I don't have it. It's, it's not there. So. This is your secret. My secret weapon. There it is. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you for using words better than me. Um, so we're going to go back to the sash shoulder. We want this to be a full sequined sash, right? So what we're going to do. Let's go ahead, and we're going to go to the magic wand tool right here, okay? 
And there's two ways we can go about this. Completely up to you. Select, deselect. Before you start really grabbing things with the magic wand tool, it's good to deselect things. And your options on doing that is select, deselect, or as it says, control D. Control D or Apple D, whichever one works best for you. Um, so without further ado, we have two ways we can go about doing this, grabbing the actual sash um, to put the sequin texture on it. I'm going to show you both ways real quick. One is we actually grab each individual piece. So you'll click right there on the sash. You're going to hold shift and keep on clicking. This piece right here is part of the sash. So is this. So is this. That was too much. Right here. Yeah. And bam. I held shift and I kept clicking at all the little areas and that went ahead and got all of them highlighted. You'll notice how I, without really clicking anything, zoomed out and in. If you want to go ahead and do that, your options are for PC, hit control and hit either plus or minus, just like this. Or with a Mac, hit Apple and then plus minus and you'll be able to zoom in and out. So that's one way, is we go ahead and select, hold shift, and keep going, or we can go another way. We can select outside of the layer, and then we're going to hit Control, Alt, I. Nope. Control shift I, excuse me. I do. Control shift I. What that's going to do is invert your selection. So okay. notice how I had lots of problems with selecting this little piece over here. That one right there, which I got first try as I was saying I had problems, obviously, naturally. What we can do to alleviate those problems is if you want to grab everything that's on that layer, just select a piece that's actually not filled, an empty part of the layer. And from there, Control Shift I or Apple Shift I, and that'll actually invert the selection that you had, and it just kind of makes it a lot easier if you are just kind of trying to grab everything. If you're just trying to grab, you know, this piece right here and this piece right here, and not mess with any of that, it's better to select Hold Shift and then select that and then go from there. Whichever works best for you. It's all you know, different attacks for different scenarios. So. Let's go ahead and give this sash some sequence. Since we're going to select it all, I'm going to go boom, control shift I. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up to sequence example and I'm going to unhide it. Notice how I put it all in place for the sashes. Mm -hmm. From here, this is my magic weapon control J. Boom, we have sequence. So, say you want red sequins, not these silver ones. What we can do from here is take the sequin layer that we had that we just brought from here. Let me go ahead and name that. What we're going to do is move up into this category right here. Okay? We have two options that we can really get a lot with. One is multiply. Notice how it'll be nice and stark colors. Or from here, go to overlay, and it looks a lot brighter. And whichever one works best for you, uh, yeah, that is definitely so one. Like multiply big will darken it. Yes, multiply will do the dark version. Overlay kind of softens it and just makes it kind of blend in a little better like a screen almost exactly so let's go ahead and say we want as well as a sash sequin we want a plaid front for this coat we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to go to coat coat type one coat front and i'm going to do exactly what i did last time i'm going to select outside of the coat mm -hmm. 
Control Shift I or Apple Shift I, whichever one. Come back up. Make sure that you have the layer that you're going to extrude from. Make sure it's active, make sure it's visible, and make sure you are on that layer before we do this. Okay. From here, Control or Apple J, and bam, we got plaid. Uh, the early days of pie wear, and we started doing uh, started doing the uh, the fabrics. Anytime I would see plaid, I would just like for this immediate freak out for a split second because painting that in was just horrible. This is a way faster way to just get it out there, make it look good, and not make it look like someone just kind of scribbled on it. And so, this so, will save you a lot of time and save you a lot of headaches. So now all we have to do is move it down into the uh, jacket area. Correct. So, let me go ahead from here, keep on cruising into coat front. Bam. We now have fancy sash and plaid. I'm going to go ahead and change this up. And this right here, see how like busy the plaid is and how it really detracts from that, mm -hmm. from the uh, from the oomph that the, uh, the sparkle should have. We're going to go ahead and move that back to multiply. And now they're both competing for your for your attention. If this is too harsh and the overlay is too light, what we can do is slowly adjust the opacity. I apologize for my dog. She's a chihuahua. She's a jerk. I've got a pit bull. He's really friendly. It's the chihuahua's the jerk. The pit bull's the nice one. I, I don't know. That's funny. So yeah, sometimes so pull your opacity down. And it'll, it'll, so now it kind of, here it kind of looks like the overlay, mm -hmm. but if we go kind of half and half, it creates a nice middle ground. Right. And so, yeah, those are definitely two of the biggest tricks that I think you can do that'll, A, speed up the process, and then B, also give you some nice striking looks. Great. That's awesome. Here. All right, guys. So, yeah, in uh, Photoshop, do we have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that? Yeah. I don't have any Photoshop questions it doesn't look like. So okay. cool. if you're ready, let's swap over to uh All right. Let me go ahead and get that opened up real fast. Give me okay. just one second. And so while we're waiting that to come up, um, when we're opening up the template, we had a couple of questions that uh, we're some people are having a hard time seeing the body part outlines. So we may want to look at, see if there's a way of uh, making that a little bit easier to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, All right. So let's see here. Okay. Go ahead and shut this down real quick. Saves all of the changes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're good on this one. Save changes. Nope. So we're good to go. Boom. Get you ready to go here. So with all that Photoshop knowledge I just dropped on you, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and drop a lot more on you for GIMP. I apologize. All right. And we'll just need to share that GIMP screen whenever you get it up. Bam. We're good? No, I only see one window. Look at, I see a tools window. Huh. You might have to share your whole screen if it's multiple options. Okay. Uh, with that being said, change window, screen two, share. Is that better? Yeah, we can see everything now. Okay, cool. And what version of GIMP are you running? If you go to uh, help and about GIMP, just so we can... The help menu there to the right. Oh, that's that's the minutes. one that says help. 2.8.2.10.18. I believe this is the most recent version because I downloaded this yesterday, I believe. Okay. Okay. Tools. Yeah, I'm on 2.10.4. Yes. I believe it's all pretty much the same. Right. Uh, and we are looking at the generic uniform template. Correct. Correct. Okay. Give me just one second. Um, my uh, 
layers disappeared. Windows. And then dockable dialogs. Layers. There we go. And we just shared out the... Um, I just shared out the March generic template yes. XDF file. Okay. So if you'll go ahead and grab that, that's this file that we're working with in the GIMP format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and share that out real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm sharing it for you. Oh, cool. Thank you. So let me go ahead and window. Grab my tools. So I know what I'm doing. So we have our layers palette similar to uh, very similar. Doug GIMP is free. It is a free software. I will get you a link to download. It's just GIMP.org. Sorry, my uh the whole Give me just one second. Sorry about this, guys. Your your layout has changed a little bit. Considerably, uh, ever since I was using it like just a few hours ago, it decided it wanted to do something different today. Um, of course it would, right? Yeah, of course. Let's see here. Well, anyways, before I get kind of get into that, the same situation essentially applies to this one, except for you'll notice. Can you see this part right here? We can see the layers section. Okay. So this right here. Okay. Let me... So with these layers, the only real difference in any of this is instead of there being a color overlay, it is utilizing the paint bucket tool. Okay. And that's pretty much the only difference with this one. Trying to get my paint bucket tool open so I can show you guys how to change all this stuff out. But it is hiding from me, so give me just one second. We, Jerry, we sent out a second set of downloads. Um, the files end in XCF, and those are specifically designed for GIMP. There are some changes in the file to make it uh, more compatible uh, for GIMP itself instead of having to do an import of the Photoshop file. So if you'll open up the uh, new downloads that we just sent out. Brushes, colors, there we go. All right, guys. So right now I've got the paint bucket tool filled in, selected. And so you'll notice right here, it says FG color fill, means foreground color fill. Right here means fill a whole selection. This is kind of what we want to select when we do this. Right now, layer wise, we are on Cape full color. Just a quick thing to pay attention to with the Cape. Notice the ruffly pattern going on right here. Mm -hmm. That is this right here that says Cape overlay. So if you want a cape that just has a uh, flat kind of feel to it, just go ahead and make that disappear, and you are good to go. With that being said, make sure that when you are using the paint bucket to fill up the layer, make sure you're on cape full color and not cape overlay, because that's going to cause some problems. So moving on, with the cape full color, I'm going to go ahead and show that again. All we're going to do is with the paint bucket selected, hold the shift button, and then I want you to just bam. Select all the parts that need to be changed. When I am clicking with this color, I am hitting shift every single time. So you, if you say, turn it to blue, and I'm gonna try to click it, what happens is, if I'm not holding shift, 
it'll change everything. If I hold shift, it'll do just the part that it's selected. It's one of the different pieces about GIMP. It's Photoshop and GIMP are they're, they're similar, they're comparative, but they're not the same. Uh, uh, the, a real quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, option for affected area. Uh huh. Uh, there's an option for fill, fill similar colors. Yes. So if you click on that and then just click on the blue, or let's go ahead and change to a different color. Oh, it still does that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one, you don't actually have to hit shift when you do that, but mm -hmm. I guess that one was more of a tried and true method for me. So yeah. when we hit fill similar colors, mm -hmm. I don't have to hit shift. But yeah, it's kind of, I guess that's going to be kind of all in your, uh, your all preferences. I will okay. say this, um, when it comes down to texturing, when it comes down to making these fabrics, there's no real one right way to do it. You know, everyone's going to have their own way to get from point A to point B and they can be wildly different, but they can still create the exact same result. So if, you know, a few weeks from now when you're, you know, experimenting and making all your, you know, fun fabrics and letting your imagination go wild and you find that you have a different way of creating than I've said to create, it's not wrong. It's just the way you want to do it, you know? So there's definitely no wrong. I mean, there's wrong answers. I mean, if it doesn't show up right, then that's wrong. But aside <laughs> from that, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Well, can so, we uh, build a, uh, a uniform just like we did? Absolutely. Kind of go through the steps. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and take the cape off this one. I don't really, what was it, Edna from? Uh, Edna Motes. Yeah, no capes. <laughs> Absolutely we're gonna, no capes. <laughs> we're going to keep a sash. We're going to lose the belt. Just a heads up with the belt. It's got two layers. We have the buckle and the actual belt. Some of the belts that we have or some of the things we have that are kind of like a cummerbund or whatever, um, you can go ahead and recreate that with that. But just wanted to throw that out there. Great. But no belts. For this one no belts no capes no belts no capes we threw weapons here so uh gauntlets we're gonna go ahead and just do a solid gauntlet like the last one yeah and now let's get a little weird uh let's go let's see here okay so we're gonna use these we're gonna go ahead and just kind of start up at the top with the sash let's go ahead and it ain't broke so let's not try to fix it Let's go for some red. Just. Um, we had a question from Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, when you removed the cape layer, mm -hmm. um, does it automatically remove the cape uh, overlay layer as well? Correct. Correct. So, so as this one is cape full, cape mid, shin, back of the knee, these folders have a subfolder in which is the overlay and the background color. So if you hide this part right here, or if we show it, the second you hide this specific little subfolder, mm -hmm. it'll hide everything. Okay, great. So I tried to make it as easy as possible for you guys so you can just kind of just plow through and you know get the let the creative juices kind of work as opposed to you know having to fudge with stuff. I'm take okay. the belt away. For changing just the sash color, we have another question here. Um, mm -hmm. Having some difficulties changing just the sash color. Um, can you walk through that once more? Absolutely. So, do you make sure that you have the paint bucket, the bucket fill selected? Make sure as well that you have this selected to where it says the sash left shoulder. So being up on this top layer to where it says sash, you're not going to really get a hold of anything. So if I try to do a paint bucket fill right now, right here, see how it says cannot modify the pixels of layer groups? Okay. What that means is um, it you need to move down a subfolder here to the actual sash, and then you can modify the pixels. So this right here, what happens if I don't hit shift, and there I hit shift. Blue. So, Zach, if you... Uh... You'll need to make sure that you have your the layer sash left or sash right showing Correct. and selected. 
Yes. And then you so. shift click on the sash to change the color with your paint bucket. Correct. Perfect. So you need no belt. Make you go away. Put the gauntlets. Let's go ahead. The pointed tip for this gauntlet. Let's go ahead and make that nice and red too. That's not red. Let's see here. My tool palette has disappeared. So I drop a tool right here. Just like that. That's the color right I want. So let's go back to here. Hold shift. Ah. Sorry, guys. Give me just one second so I can get my tool window back up. Because recently, it's like five bucks. Nothing. 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 So, where's the eyedropper tool? Fonts, mm -hmm. tool presets, gradients, brushes, paint dynamics. Okay, just click on the tool once more. Is it? Yeah, looking for the eyedropper tool. Uh, the eyedropper tool. It is. Colors or slayers. The color picker tool? Correct. Um, go to tools. Here. Sorry, guys. Uh, toggle your toolbox, maybe? Control B? Control B, you said? Yeah. Did that bring up your toolbox? Mm -mm. I'm wondering what is going on here. Um, I sincerely apologize, guys. Give me just, give me one split second to maybe Let's see if we can't find it here oh the shortcut key is O. color there it is under tools you were the man thank you sir bam just like that hot keys are your best friend if you know them um sadly with gimp i do not know the hot keys i know every single one of them for photoshop well not every single one but a whole bunch of them for photoshop but uh gimp is definitely not my not first important. weapon of choice it is a very powerful weapon that can get just as much done as photoshop it's just not not the, the one i'm the best with so i do apologize for that so let's get back to this real quick the eyedropper tool selected oh and now what are we doing now we're gonna go back to the fill tool there you are hey what's up tools i missed you so now that I can actually show you what we're doing, okay. go ahead and hit this button here, hit shift. We hit the gauntlet pointed tips and we're back in business. All righty. I'm going to take the wristband, hold shift, we go straight. I'm going to make that a nice middle gray color. Okay. Oh, darker gray. Why not? Boom. Go ahead and select that. Close that down. Gauntlet right hand. Gauntlet straight. Same color. We're going to go back up here. We're going to hit that color selector tool right here. And click that right there. Well, if I might to interject it. one suggestion while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. While you're selecting them, if you select the red and then press your X shortcut key, that'll toggle that red to the background. Nice. And then now get a get do your eyedropper tool for your gray at the same time, and you have both of the colors there. Very nice. Very nice. That way, uh, you only need to eyedrop once. So just a just a heads up. With that being said, excellent excellent information. Um, 
notice the eyedropper tool. So in Photoshop, this will work regardless of what layer you're on. But say I'm trying to grab that gray right there, right? I'm up here. So we're going to swap that color out, right? So I'm here. I'm going to try to get that gray. See how it's not actually showing up at all? The way you're going to get that gray is be on the layer with the color and then hit it. Got it. Just, just as a, you know. With that being said, if you're up on the top subfolder to where it has all these other folders inside, you can use the eyedropper tool. Is it, but long story short, if you're on the sub tool that doesn't have any pixel information, it won't work. If you go up one higher, it will. And Just Jerry, as good. Jerry, to get your color palette up, if you go to your Windows menu, go to dockable, dockable dialogs and choose colors, that'll bring up your color palette. Again, that's the Windows menu, dockable dialogs, and choose colors. Let's go ahead and do some light gloves today. Why not? All right. Paint bucket, shift, click, 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 and we're in business. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Hide the glove department since we're done with it. It's a good idea, by the way. Um, to kind of open up and the stack and get where you want to get after you're done with it, just go ahead and close it up because it'll just it'll save any confusion for later on down the road. Let's hop in the code. Click like a layer. Yes. So we're gonna do coat type two this time, the straight across one. Let's see here. So, coat type two. Mm, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and do a white front. What do we say, guys? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, notice how. Notice how I was talking about with the um, eyedropper tool. You can get on the top sub layer and you can get the color information. With that being said, when you get the paint bucket tool and you go up to the combined version of each individual sub layer, notice. I can't actually change yeah. the color. So you need to actually be here to adjust any of the um, actual color information. But up top, you can retrieve the color information. Down below, you actually have to go to you know mess with it at all. So moving forward, white front. We're going to do a dark gray back. So from here, hit right. X, get that color back, shift, click, click, click. So you'll notice that the actual changing of the colors is a bit more arduous in this version. Um, there is a way to import the ability to do the color overlays in GIMP, but you have to download um, a plugin and put it all in. And I figured we didn't have time for that tonight. So if you want to go over that later on, more than happy to, to, to do that. Uh, so go ahead and get this taken care of. Coat arms. Hmm. All right. Let's see here. Got arm left, arm right. Go ahead and do let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the right arm. Let's go ahead and do that white. On left. Go ahead. Let's have that be red. 
Close that down. Rip the boots. Let's go ahead and just go with. Uh... Oh, by the way, um, so notice how down below we really can't see that. A quick way to make that uh, kind of appear in pan is hold the space bar and just move your mouse upwards, just like that. Oh. Make your life a little bit easier. I didn't even know that one. That's a that's a. I was very happy that that was the same. <laughs> by the way, in Photoshop, same thing applies. So oh, space bar, hold it, space drag bar. around. Yeah, just space bar and drag around with your mouse. Uh, with GIMP, uh, you hit the space bar. Notice that what that just did. When you hit the space bar, it made this go away. If you hit the space bar and pan down below, so watch this. right now what I'm doing is I hold the space bar and I'm just moving the mouse around. I don't have to actually click down on the uh, the scene to move it around. In Photoshop, when you hit the space bar, you will have to click and then drag around. Okay. So little differences. So from here, with the boots, we're going to go ahead and have knee-high boots. Why not? Let's do it. We're doing it. Boom. The soles. Black. Shift. Click. 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 You'll notice there's overbleed kind of in right here. That won't show up in the texture <coughs> at all. This is kind of overbleed um, coinciding with the marcher guides okay. that we have. Notice how it comes outside mm -hmm. of the guides. So just if you were nervous about that or curious about that, don't worry. That's It's kind of supposed to be like that just to make sure you can kind of see everything. Okay. So basically um, when you have the guides up, there's a pink outline. It correct. A pink outline, correct? Correct. Boom. Yeah. So kind of comes out a little bit past just to make sure that all texture information is represented and accounted for. Great. So knee high boots. You know what? Let's make them gray. Soles black, boots gray. All right. Shift, click, 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 click. I'm so sorry if you're tired of hearing me say click, but uh, it's going to be a, a just a second longer. Let's get in with the pants. Go ahead and take the stripes off. You know what? Let's just make the pants black. Okay. Go ahead and take those off. Boom. I'm going to hit and inverse that to the pants. Hold shift. Yep. Click. 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 And now we are good to go. We now have a texture. We have a green neck. We have a green neck. It was fancy. It's St. Patrick's Day. Ah, St. Patty's Day. Yeah, yeah. No, I told it was totally on purpose. I promise you. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and take the collar rim. Go ahead and black. Take the collar. Gonna go ahead and grab the eyedropper tool right here. With that, move over in coat. Remember, on top of this, you can actually still get your information. Going to move on down back in the collar. Shift. Paint bucket. Shift. Click. Click. And now we have no more St. Patrick's Day neck. Yay! Yay! All righty, guys. So we are almost done. From here, what we're going to do, right click. Duplicate layer. We're going to open up the uniform template with ethnic ethnicities XCF file. Go ahead and get that up and running real quick. And just like we did with the last one, we're going to click here. We're going to go select all. Edit, copy. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this part right here is selected. We're going to go select all. 
edit, paste, and we are done. That is that. Awesome. Voila. And now let's go through the save process once more. Well, I'm here. File. There's a few different ways we can go about this. If you hit save here, what that's going to do. That is, saves the XCS or XCF file. Correct. So to go to Pyware, we want to do the export. Correct. Here is export. And right here, it's already PNG. So from here, one more time, we're just going to name it I Love Pyware 2. And export. Export. Don't worry about any of this. Export. And voila, we now have marchers. If you want to go ahead and get those gloves back being that beautiful white we had, you can just open up the ethnicities real quick and make the hands on scene. And we're good to go. Awesome. Let's see. Here. Are there Do you guys have any? About... Yeah. Any questions of what we've covered? I know there we uh, we've gone over a lot of information tonight. So. I hope no one's brain hurts too bad right now. <laughs> Anything at all. Uh, Doug says you make it too, make it looks too easy. Oh, thank you, Doug. <laughs> Zach, where are you getting uh, stuck on? If anywhere. If you'd like to go over that, um, Oh, clicking 30 layers to do one arm. Um, there is a, uh, you can do it in one section, it looks like. Correct, correct. We were doing, the example that was done was so you can have different different colors on the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. um, so open up in here, when we open that up, right here we've got gauntlet both hands, right? Mm -hmm. In here, gauntlet's all. This one right here, if you want to just go the whole, just get, the gauntlet just one direct color. Go ahead and work on that layer, and you'll be good to go. And then it's gonna at that point it's going to um, change the gauntlet color for the for both arms. Correct. And if you choose not to have a gauntlet at all, you can change the arm color in one swoop on Perfect. which layer? The actual arm colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll go ahead and go into coat. And here, arms left and right. Okay, so you can. Perfect. So that'll be the whole arm, mm -hmm. the top half, and the bottom half of each arm. Okay. So yeah, guys, I know I threw a bunch of information at you, and I don't expect all of it to stick tonight. Um, I'm here. I mean, this is, this is. I mean, my job, and I'm here for you guys. So my email, Jesse J E S S E at Pyware.com. I'm, I'm here for you guys. I'm one email away. If you guys have any questions, you need anything. I mean, if you need anything at all, hit me up. I'm here for you. We have a question. What's your um, preference, Photoshop or GIMP? Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Photoshop. Um, yeah, I'm. It, GIMP is it's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, the actual layer setup that we've got right here, um, it was from the Photoshop file that I did. I brought it in and then reconverted it. I mean, they play well together. Um, one's not better than the other. It's just kind of what your preference is, kind of in the way you think and the way you kind of workflow. Um, I personally yeah. really like Photoshop. Um, just kind of always been my go-to um, ever since I was just doing 2D drawings before I even went into 3D. I always use Photoshop. So that's just kind of my the one I stick to. But that doesn't mean it's better. It's just the way I think and the way I move, it, it's right. a way. I do know that uh, the Adobe has a, a subscription model. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, can you, or we've got one shared. Let me uh, jump over and show cool. what it's going to look like in Pyware. With that being said, guys, um, yeah, if you come up with anything cool, um, you know, post a post a, a picture of it in the forums and all that. I definitely want to see where you guys go with this. I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens. One second. Let me pull up 3D here, and we can put them down. All right, let's get our I Love Pieware download happening. Uh, Dan, uh, redesign of the sash. What, what what kind of redesign are we looking for? Ah, um, let's see here. Oh, so kind of like over and okay. Um, you know, with this, this is an open ended amendable document. Um, if you guys need something, just let me know and I can add it into the document to help you guys later on down the road. Um, this is by all means, this is not 100% complete. We have a guard one coming up as well. Uh, we got a whole bunch of cool stuff coming up for you guys. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, uh, anything like that, just hit me up, hit Dustin up, and we can get y'all taken care of. All right, let's take a look here. I'm going to take the screen sharing on this end. Okay. Nice. Is everybody seeing our screen now? This is just a sample from what we were working with the other day. Um, let's go to document options. I'm going to my real view perspective. I'm going to choose my mail marcher. I'm going to choose to edit that. I'm going to locate my new file, which I have on my desktop. My I love Pyware. And here's a sample of that that you see. I'm going to apply that to us. And now, if I zoom in here, I have our newly created. Yay! And this is what that uniform now looks like inside of Pyware. Let's uh, select someone right quick. Definitely very excited to see where you guys go with this. And get our round camera happening. And there we go. Yeah, so hopefully this um, speeds your time up and, and, you know, lets you guys go and be creative and not have to, you know, mess with anything or anything like that. And Yeah. Genuinely hope this guy's help. This helps you guys out. Great. All right. Well, are there any other questions for Jesse or myself? It's an in, We've taken an in-depth look on creating uh, detailed uh, uniforms. Um, if you'd like to see anything else created, we'd be happy to do another session on this with Jesse. Um, I'd love to. Eat. Yeah, this has been great, guys. Thank you. If there's no other questions, I think we'll sign off for tonight and be sure to catch our night school next Wednesday, uh, 9 p.m. And then we'll have another master session at the end of next week as well. Uh, so if you have any questions, please just reach out to us, Facebook or email. Uh, Y'all have a wonderful night. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. This warms my heart. <laughs> well, thank you, Jesse, so much for coming on. And thank you for my everybody, pleasure. everybody coming on. Have a good one, guys. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.